Hey, do you like pain? And do you like Pokemon? Well, if you answered yes to either of those questions, I have the game for you. Wait, you said no to both of those? Oh, nope, no Tixie Baxies, you already clicked on the video. Pokemon Run and Bun is a ROM hack of Pokemon Emerald, which includes Mons up through Generation 8, as well as numerous boss fights, story changes, and balancing. I'm gonna Nuzlocke it. Uh... Oh god. In typical Nuzlocker fashion, I am simply too impatient to let the text scroll, so I go to my options, make the text speed go to fast, and I have to pick out the perfect frame. Yeah, that's the one. Because I have a life, and I don't plan on spending days at a time planning for every single fight in the game, I am going to use just a couple of heart scales. To keep it short, heart scales are basically just a limited in-game currency that are used to teach your mons moves, change natures, or just up your guys' IVs, but I'm a little curse word, so uh, I don't really care. Plus, this game is hard enough as is. After touching a stranger's balls, the town's professor has no choice but to give me a Pokemon. This is arguably the most important decision of the game, as Turtwig is a grass and ground type when it evolves, and it gets shell armor so it's immune to critical hits. Piplup is also good because water and steel is incredible, but it doesn't really pop off until late game. And then there's Monkey. After receiving my monkey, I have to carefully select a nickname that accurately describes what he is capable of. All right, enough chit chat. Let's meet the starting lineup. Alright, so the first route in this game has four trainers with some pretty weak mons, so there's nothing really much to comment about. However, there is one trainer that has a Swirlix and a Spinda that only use Metronome. And this most of the time isn't a problem, but sometimes it's uh, quite concerning. But we ball out, we're fine. Dad, move out of my way, I got places to be and bitches to see. At least now we get our first real encounter of the game, and this grass has some pretty good mons that you can get. Wow, that's so weird, my game crashed. All right, so we get our first real encounter. Oh my God, it's a Scatterbug. Ha ha ha, welcome to the team. Scatterbug already fully evolves at this point in the game, so Vavillian is just gonna put in work against the next few trainers. And speaking of trainers, this first guy has a Yanma with Sonic Boom that can easily ruin your run. And then there's a Magikarp with Choice Band Bounce and some Hydro Pumps. I, I don't know, it's kind of cringe. This old lady gives me some berries and we get ambushed by an Aqua Grunt. Now this is the first mini boss of the game. However, my butterfly is about to put in a shift. After defeating this absolute hooligan, we take a visit to the local town senile old man. <laughs> After convincing this American politician that I'm worth his time, he takes me on a short boat ride to possibly the worst town in any Pokemon game. Despite this, we do get to evolve a few members of our team as well as collect a few new ones. We get a Horsey, a Stuffle, and a Choodle. What up, gang? Before we can get one more encounter, we have to fight two trainers. The first guy leads to the Staryu, but our Chin Chow can take him out quite easily. And then we're gonna have Cream Team clean up the rest of this battle. He's gonna get confused, but we never hit ourselves in confusion. After flawlessly taking out the Lombre, uh, they send in an Aerocuda, but... <sighs> Poor fella. The second trainer is easy too. The Chin Chow can just take out his lead Dwebble, but he has a belly drumming Munchlax in the back, but our monkey can outspeed and just kick him in the face. Now that we're in Granite Cave, we actually have our first opportunity to roll an encounter for arguably the best Pokemon in the game, Togedemaru. I know, right? There are several rooms in Granite Cave where I can choose to get my encounter, but if I go down a floor, I have an increased chance of getting Togedemaru. So I walk over to my lucky corner to roll my encounter, and long behold, I actually do not f***ing get the Togedemaru. You are nothing but a disappointment. After our underage protagonist meets a strange man alone in a cave, we hop back on the Biden boat to go bully some children. The first thing I do upon arriving to the beach is stealing sand from this young girl. It's no wonder your castle's taking a long time to make when you keep giving away your sand. If you haven't noticed by now, uh, the early game battles are really pretty easy, so there's not much to talk about these other than, oh hey, I'm one-shotting and hard countering these guys. There's not a lot of strategy going on, but uh, there is one fight in this early game that people don't really give enough credit, and I think is one of the hardest in the game. Ugh, look, this next fight, uh, 
is, is brutal. It's probably one of the hardest in the early game. I've spent about like three hours cooking it, uh, cooking this line, and I don't even think that this line is completely safe. Um, it's going to take a few risks, but I think we'll be good. I hope. All right, so he's going to lead with a Caterpie, and so we're bringing out the Monk. Um, so we outspeed and kill here with the Flame Wheel. Perfect, perfect, yep. Now, this is going to bait in, actually, the Weed... Yeah, the Weedle, the Weedle, the Weedle. So he thinks that he can outspeed my Monferno, but actually, he, he doesn't. Oh, my... Wow. Okay, so this is where the fight gets a little tough. Um, I was thinking I would have to pivot here, uh, maybe play like something safe. Uh, like I could take him out with the cream team, but um, I don't know. I think I'm going to risk it. I think I'm dead to crit here. Come on, come on, come on. Please, please, come on. Holy sh**. This is why everyone picks monkey. Uh, the battle's not even over yet, though. Oh, no. Oh, f this thing's tanky, dude. Um... I think I gotta hit him with the Leer first. Lower his defense, because I don't know if... I don't think we do enough to kill him. Okay, that's kind of f***ed up, man. Minus one orange berry, but all good. We outspeed. We get a clean KO here. Just barely getting a, a guaranteed one hit there. The Leer was definitely necessary. And now we outspeed the Blip Bug in the back. And, uh... Whew, man, that went a lot smoother than I thought it could, but... After beating the shit out of all the kids on the beach, I went over to get my encounter and, um, uh, well. On the negative $12 bill. Whoa. This is worthless. I went and stole this guy's sunglasses and then I went to get my encounter for Slateport. And it's not that bad, but sadly, he will never be him. I need to get into the museum, but there's a line of people, so I guess I just kind of have to wait with them. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm fucking saying. To kill some time, I paid a visit to my favorite character in the Pokemon franchise, Doc. He tells me to go to the museum like I didn't already want to do that anyways. Bro, I am broke. Please do not embarrass me in front of the hose. Okay, cool, thanks. It's now time for a back-to-back -back battle. Now, if you have a Togemaru, he can actually just 1v6 this entire fight, but I don't. So what I didn't prepare for is that I would be ambushed by Michael Jackson. <laughs> It's not that interesting of a double battle to narrate. Uh, it, I really didn't have too much trouble with this. So uh, here's some pictures of my cats. That's my boy, Tim. He's just straight chilling. And he has a foot fetish. This is Beef. He's a little orange gremlin and he just likes to watch. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who this is, but he won't leave me alone. Another day, another boss down. You know what that means. We get to level up our guys, but hold on. Wait a minute. Look down, Nathan. Oh shit! You just busted a nut! With my newly powered up team, I beat the shit out of this camper and found some more drugs. Now I do want a little certain electric dog here, but I actually just ended up gathering the throatiest goatiest. Welcome to the team. Now all we have left is to go take on the first gym. You know, the trainers in this gym are really quite something. Uh, this one person's got a focus sash manky with only power up punch. Uh, and then there's baby. Now, if you've done this fight a couple times already, you kind of know how to maneuver around everything. Uh, and the one thing I realized pretty quickly is uh, I can actually just put this Cub Fu to sleep and he really just can't do shit about it. Um, so that's one. Brawly's best answer for my butterfly is his Hitmon top, and it just wants to fake me out and hit me with a rock slide. So I protect to avoid the fake out chip, and then I can just put him to sleep because I'm faster. So get f***ed. Scraggy comes out next and it wants to rock to me, but my sexy bunny doesn't really care about getting its speed lowered. So I send it out and I could just hit him with two covets and I could take him out lickety split. Poliwhirl comes out next and it wants to hit me with a superpower, but I could just four times resist that with my Zatu. And all I gotta do is really just dodge an Ice Beam Freeze and I can take him out no problem. Brawly also has his own sexy bunny rabbit, but I outspeed it and it has an eject button. So when this thing takes damage, it's just gonna swap out. So I'll see you later. The inferior chicken comes in and yeah, he just dies to a single Psy Beam. Bye bye. The bunny comes back in one more time, so I swap to Flaffy to tank the Retaliate. I have an Orin Berry to heal up after the hit, but I have to risk a crit in order to get a Cotton Spore off. 
After avoiding the crit, we slow him down, and then I can swap back over to the butterfly, where I can take a hit easily, put the bunny to sleep, and then finish him off with some air cutters. See ya later, loser. Well, now that we've beaten the game, I'm really not sure what else there is to do. Oh, who's, who's that? Hello? I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck. Bro, shut up. It's starting. Don't care if I touch you. Yeah, the journey from Broly to Roxanne is pretty short, but we get an encounter right away and uh, meet the early game carry my fucking goat. It's important to remember that I'm using heart scales. We can take Mr. Weed's stats and move set. You know, it looks pretty mid, right? And we can turn it into something magical. Wow. Inspirational. Besides the poison barb that I found outside the forest, there's really not much to talk about other than some mid fucking trainers. Get the fuck out of my way. You know what I did to those kids at the beach. We finally made it to Rustboro, so we get three encounters, one from the north, one from the east, and one from the city itself. I was kind of hoping for the Growlithe here, but... You can't deceive me. I know what you are. Next, we head up north to fish and we get a core fish, which I'm pretty happy with, but he does make me a little uncomfortable. Everybody welcome the diddler. Last but not least, we head east. Who do we find? It's your boy. So no head. I make sure to talk to this guy, get the HM for cut. He gives me a moonstone, but more importantly, I can get all of the items that are stuck behind the trees in the forest. And we also make sure to go into the trainer school and grab the wide lens. So now we can actually start preparing for... Oh my fucking God, what do you want? Come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. I'm feeling... Bro, romantic. how did you get my number? All right, I'm going to beat your ass. I am so sick of this shit. All right, look, can we just get this over with? All right, so we start off the fight with our goat, our boy. Weed. We're gonna put his ass to sleep because we're faster and then we're just gonna beat him to death. After we beat that guy's ass, the soul rock comes in and it wants to psycho cut us. So we're gonna switch in to our Togi, who's gonna tank that shit like a boss. So because we're faster and Togi is going to bait stomping tantrum, we're gonna fake out and then U-turn for some ship and bring out our goat. We just gonna tank that stomping tantrum and then blow his ass away. Paracosta comes out and, you know, I'm still faster, so I'm just going to put him to sleep, but I'm going to swap over to Lombre because I don't want to risk him waking up and killing my Breloom, so Lombre's just going to take care of him. Zygarde comes in, but his ability steals all of my aura. Oh no. That's okay. We got our goat. We and as long as we're not going to get crit twice in a row, we tank two Skitter Smacks and we obliterate this small dog. Lunatone comes out and he wants to Icy Wind my boy, so we're gonna clap his ass and tank this Icy Wind. Now, because the Lunatone has a weakness policy, which raises his attack and special attack by two stages if I hit him with a super effective move, we're just gonna rock to him his ass down, slow him down, and chip away while also praying he does not get an ancient power boost. Okay, you? Uh, get the fuck out of here. Keep my fucking name out your motherfucking mouth. Best part of the game is when you get to level up your guys after unlocking a new level cap. Uh, this time, though, we do get some heavy hitters. Bro, Tim, you're going crazy. Okay, so before I had a little montage here because this is just a route of underleveled trainers, but that's copyright, so I'm gonna redo it so I don't get copyrighted. Bam, 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 Sun is shining in the sky. There ain't a cloud inside. It stopped raining. Everybody's in a play. And don't you know, it's a beautiful new day. Hey. Hey, welcome back. Time to get two encounters. First one for Vernon Turf. And let me just say, every Nido king needs a Nido queen. Hello, my wife. And in the case, we get it's Mr. Silly. Aww.
Well, here we are at the first route of the game that actually starts to give you a challenge. Breeder, I barely know her. Simply beat off the Gothitel and then take care of the goons in the back. Next trainer is a different story. They lead off with an Arcanine and if you don't really have a good ground or electric type, then you might struggle. I use a Rossberry to get around the burn he tries to put on me and I proceed to throw meatballs at him until he dies. Lucario comes out and it's kind of hard to switch into, but I switch to my chicken because it's going to four times resist the Aura Spear he's going to throw on me. And then I use that opportunity to switch into Hitmontop because the Shadow Ball will do nothing to me. Goodbye, furry bait. The dog that I wish I had comes out. However, it does just go down to a few bulldoze clicks from Mr. Silly. Following the dog that I love is the dog that I hate. This thing is pretty much just a raid boss, so I start with tanking some hits with my Graveler and just throwing some meatballs at him. And I risk his life just a couple times to lower this dog's speed. Chonky comes in to do some chip damage, but gets attracted on the switch-in. But lucky for me, Chonky is based, hates women, and hits the bubble beam. Now the sexy bunny comes in to finish him off with a jump kick, but oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? Thankfully, Chicken is just built different and is able to tank a return so he can finish him off with a drill pack. But there's one more and Chonky switches in to absorb the Thunderbolt and then finish this guy off with some bubble beams. Well, can't really get any harder than that, right? Right? Lives, all mortal lives expire. Souls go to their doom. in the cause, curtain falls, but hold your applause, swirl, swirl, for now down here come the claws. been a long ass route, but we're finally on the last fight before we get to Watson's gym. You can't believe what? You keep losing? It's because your dog sh Shell leads with a Lapras, so we bring out our goat. We Killing Lapras with Berloom is going to bait out the Togekiss, so we just swap over to our Throat Goat, and Throat is going to tank the Air Cutter. Now, a Mystical Fire does lower our special attack, but we're still just going to fire away some Shockwaves. And what surprises me, and I didn't even completely realize myself, is that Grass Knot is a contact move, so Togekiss goes for a Grass Knot, and it actually ends up paralyzing them. So that just cleans that up for free. Bro, all this Delcaddy wants to do is throw one fake out and then just spam last resort. So as long as you can tank the normal moves, then you're chilling. This stupid ass bug comes out, but we're just gonna ass clap its cheeks. You know the deal. Rhydon comes out, but let's be real. There's really nothing he can do. Bend over, get your cheeks clapped. And then last in the back is just a slow bro, and I definitely could have played this better, but my first decision was just to swap over to Toga Tomaru and get some chip damage. Ass Clapper comes back in, and the Stealth Rocks that got set up that I totally didn't forget to mention, uh, do some little chip damage, and we just gotta hope that Ass Clapper could clap some ass, you know what I'm saying? The fucking audacity of this guy to just start slacking off all over me? Unacceptable. Ass Clapper isn't afraid of getting whirlpooled in, bro. Like, I, I don't give a shit, man. I'm gonna bite you to death. It's kind of mean. Fuck you. 
right. We collect our first batch of citrus berries and then arrive to Mauville. And honestly, how rude of me to not introduce the encounter we got from the previous route. This Pokemon wraps itself around its prey and paralyzes it with electricity from the round spots on its sides. Then it chomps. Yeah, all right, bro, you're valid. Now, getting to Mauville is a very big milestone because not only do we get to increase our level cap yet again, but we also get access to the evolution stones, which in turn allows us to evolve some of our guys that have been stuck in their middle form. We get our Ludicolo, we get an Electros, and we delayed our Nidoqueen evolution so we can get Earth Power. But the best part about this city is not only does my drug dealer live here, yippee, but I finally get to go home. Remember kids, 99% of gamblers quit right before they hit it big. Now the casino is a one-time encounter that you can get at any point in your journey. You unlock a new pool of Pokemon to select from for every gym badge you get. So the better the gym badge you have, the better the mons you can choose from. So it's best to delay this encounter for as long as possible. Wait, this battle isn't in the documentation. Hold on. Wait, what the fuck? Level 43? I'm, I mean, all right, I guess uh, it's not too bad. But what else does he have, man? You're wasting my fucking time. The trainers in Watson's gym aren't that bad so long as you at least somewhat prepare for them. Uh, they're pretty gimmicky, like the first trainer has an unburdened Drifflim with an electric seed, which instantly raises its defense and doubles its speed when it comes into battle. There's also another battle that has a Golem and an Electrode that both have Explosion, but have the ability Galvanize, so the Explosion becomes Electric type. And then last is a double battle that actually takes advantage of the plus and minus mechanic. I have never seen that shit before, but it's kind of cool. My box kind of struggled with an opening for this fight, uh, so this is the best I got. Um, all right, fuck it, we've all. All right, so Watson opens up with a Magnezone, and this guy's kind of a bitch because if you try to just one-hit him, he's just going to proc a Sturdy, and then his Custap is going to proc, and he's pretty much just going to wipe out your guy with an Explosion. So you really have to be careful taking this guy out. Now, I had to take a risk with uh, my Hitmontop because I didn't have any other guy in my box that could take this out safely. So all I had to really do was just risk a crit for him getting a low HP, but... You know, is what it is, we got it. Next comes out the Gratom, and obviously we can't stay in, so we switch over to the Big Champa. Now, we tank the Air Slash, and I have a Ross Berry on this guy because I expect him to go for a Will-O-Wisp. So, uh, I'm just gonna keep Thunder Punching him down while I wait for that, but when he does go for Will-O-Wisp, he actually misses the first time, so pretty much best case scenario for me this fight. And because we have the Berry still, the second Will-O-Wisp is no problem for us at all, so the Gratom goes down, no issues whatsoever. Now, the Furry comes out because it outspeeds and outdamages my big Champa, so I switch over to my wife because I know that he's going to go for a close combat. Because he's going to go for a close combat, his defense is going to be lowered. Now, the only moves that this guy sees that do damage to me are Grass Knot and Knock Off, and as to avoid getting anything unnecessarily knocked off, I don't equip anything to my Nidoqueen. So, down goes the Furry. Next comes out the Thickums, and I know that the Lantern can either go for a Scald or an Ice Beam here. And I really want to take it out with my Berloom, but I don't want to risk switching into an Ice Beam. So I opt to switch into my own Lantern, chip it down a little bit, and then I can safely switch to my Berloom later on to finish it off. The Electros comes out, and it's at this point that I realize that it might be getting a little dangerous for me. So I put him to sleep with Berloom, and I switch over to Tim, who's gonna stomp him down. And despite Electros throwing some drain punches my way, Tim can tank it and out damage him and take the KO. But this does put us in a tricky situation. Now, if you aren't familiar with this game, oh uh, yeah, it's just an Ampharos, right? It's not that bad. Well, I mean... Now, because the HP of everyone else in my party is pretty low, the only riskless way for me to finish this fight is for my wife to throw off one last Earth power and sacrifice themselves for the greater good. But at the very least, we get to finish this fight strong, and Hitmontop is going to take this thing out, no problem. But this, this is a bittersweet victory, because though we get our badge and we get to keep carrying on, we lost our wife. Rest in penis. But we got a bike! Yeah, baby! Wait, 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 wait! 
So last time we finally got our bike, which means now we can shake some ass. Uh, I mean, go on the cycling road. Yay! I'm too lazy to highlight all of the trainers on Cycling Road, but the last trainer on the path is kind of a bitch. Even though I dick down their Rapidash, they send out their Surf Etched in the back, which may or may not be a Zoroark, but we handle that fine. But when the Zoroark comes out, I just kind of get like dicked and you know, it's my fault, but like, fuck you, right? Oh man, I hope an asshole doesn't block my path. God damn it. Now, the perks of picking Monkey as your starter is I think that this rival is just easier when they have the Swampert. The Indini makes the battlefield freaky. Don't try to play games with me. Otherwise, your life becomes a game. Ha! Now this Houndoom's funny because all it can do to attack me is Solar Beam, and it can only do that once because it has a power, but I'm just gonna protect and waste it, and then, uh-oh, buddy, what are you gonna do now, dipshit? So out comes the Halucha, and because he's holding a Psychic Seed, his special defense raises when he hits the field, and because he's unburdened, now he's twice as fast. But because my chicken simply is not religious and doesn't believe in critical hits, uh, we are immune to dying and we'll get the clean KO. The Swampert comes in, but now the goat hits the field, and yeah, and oh look, Swampert's gone. Now, the Gardevoir kill could have been a little smoother here had I not been like super paranoid about Destiny Bond, but we switch in Togenomaru, he's gonna get the Gardevoir down to its Focus Sash, and then I switch over to my Crawdon as I try to figure out like, hey, can I move before the Destiny Bonds? But yeah, no, I can. So I just switch over to Monkey and beat the shit out of her. And yeah, I have Monkey out already, so there's you can't do shit to me. Beating the Cycling Road Rival means we're about halfway to Norman's Gym, so now all we have between us and the fourth badge is just a few mid-trainers, though there is one double battle that's just a pain in the ass. So what makes this fight weird is the left trainer only wants to set up Tailwind whenever possible and the right trainer wants to beat us to death. So Reloom is here to bait a kill from the Crobat so it does not set up a Tailwind and I'm gonna try and take out the Crabominable with my chicken. Ogie comes in to bait the hit from the Crobat and I thought the Crabominable was gonna try and kill him with an Ice Hammer but he goes for the protect instead, which kind of throws a wrench in my plan, but it doesn't really uh, cause too many issues here. We're just gonna have to deal with Tailwind now. Now this position's actually pretty good. Uh, we're just gonna double into the Kerbomidal because the Crobat is guaranteed setting up Tailwind and Kerbomidal's gonna go down. So now we're baiting in either Polyrath or the Heracross, either of which is fine. Heracross comes out and it does see a fast kill on my Togi. So Togi is going to switch out to my Dracalje, which is gonna tank hits from both of them. Meanwhile, my chicken can just quickly take care of the Heracross. Now I thought that my Dragalge was going to be targeted by the Polyrath and the Crobat, but what actually ends up happening is I switch out my Dragalge into Electros, and I thought he was just going to take the moves, but Crobat just ends up super fanging my chicken, and the Polyrath just goes for a belly drum, which, you know, normally you'd be concerned, but yeah, I'm not putting up with this shit. Oh, great heavens! There's a Noivern in the back still, but he just gets the same treatment. Bro, I fucking hate YouTube copyright because I just want to make a silly little montage to hype up my new encounter and evolving my Gligar and Seedra, but I can't. So uh, here, here they are. All right, back to it. As much as I'm sure you wanted to watch me just one shot the remainder of the trainers on that route, I really don't give a shit. Norman's gym functions the same as in vanilla. You have to fight three different rooms of trainers and you get to kind of pick and choose your path. So I just went along with the strength, the defense and the recoil rooms. Well, looks like somebody finally got the milk. I'm not gonna lie, I got a little careless this fight, but I did at least have somewhat of a plan going in. He leads with the Porygon too, but leading with a Hitmon top that has a Cherry Berry makes this pretty quick and easy. So Azumarill comes in next, and this is where I make my fucky wucky, because Togenomaru comes in and takes this hit, gives a fake out, getting chip damage, right? And there is a killing roll that I have with Zing Zap, and I'm faster, but it's not guaranteed, and I didn't want to risk it. So, uh... Kind of just bad pathing on my part, but I think what's more likely is that I'm just a fucking dumbass. So the throat goat's got to finish this now and take a little more damage than I was willing to have on them for later in the fight. So we're no longer on the original line. It's time to steer. This 
big ass bunny comes in and we switch over to the Champa because he's got levitate and isn't getting hit by the earthquake. But he's also going to bait out foul play that Tim can tank pretty easily. Tim is going to stay in and just body slam, get some damage, shouldn't be dead to crit, but we clearly cannot live another one of those. So we have to switch back to Electros to dodge the earthquake. And then this time we're going to switch into Hitmontop who can also tank the foul play and we're going to finish him off from there. The Pidgeot comes out and does a really cool flip. Now, Lantern was supposed to just kind of be my safety Pokemon for this fight, but, uh, you know, mistakes have been made. Thankfully, Lantern is thick and survives these hits, but I fire off a discharge to, you know, just get some chip damage, and I was going to try and take it out with someone else, but we actually do get the paralysis, so kind of saved our ass there. Now, I need to bait this Chinchino into hitting me with a contact move so I can switch in my Togedemaru and pretty much just hard counter this thing. But because it wants to hit my Lantern with a Bullet Seed, I have to switch into Electros to take the Bullet Seed and then also bait a Tail Slap so I can switch into Togedemaru. The problem is I needed my Electros to be on higher HP for later in this battle. But oh, even better, my Togedemaru can't kill this thing, so <laughs> I have to risk someone else's life. So after taking five bullet seeds, I now have to take five tail slaps in hopes that I don't die, otherwise this could be bad. Yeah, I wasn't even worried. Uh, there is only one way we're gonna make this out alive. I will pay you to kill yourself. I've got a perfect spot all picked out for you. And you don't want to, that's fine. Call the Hyperion Suicide Prevention Hotline and you'll get nothing. But if you want a huge reward, you jump off that cliff and become my big. Now it's starting to look really bad as if I'm gonna have to sack like maybe three mons here, some shit, but Big Champa is just simply built different. And with a 20% chance to live, this man pulls through I can't fucking believe it either, bro. I'm sorry it had to end this way, my throat goat. Perhaps one day we will meet again. All right, let's get back into it. Just like my uncle operating a motor vehicle with a blood alcohol level of 0 0.30, I have to go wipe out a family of four. Fleeing the crime scene, I made sure to grab a cool pair of goggles off the grandma's dead body. So far, we've been through four splits on this game. The first being Brawly, the second being Roxanne, Scrooge, Bond, Scrooge, Bond. the third being Watson, and the fourth being Norman. And those were all like pretty easy, right? Like give or take maybe like 20 to 30-ish battles per split. Now going for the fifth gym badge, which is Flannery, uh, I have to fight upwards of like 70 to 80 fights. Please fucking kill me. Man, I really want to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Did somebody say Cheesecake Factory? I found this tower, and in the tower I found a little blue guy. Now, looking at his teeth, I can instantly tell this man is British. So the racist finally reveals his true form. Thankful for this old lady who insists that I keep sleeping with her, I decide to go get my encounter for the next route. You know, a Yan Mega really isn't that bad, and its deck entry says it's an ogre, so this is the easiest nickname of my life. But now we gotta kill trainers, so. <laughs> Okay, no, no, pause. This trainer killed my whole fucking vibe. Tell me how you lead with a Scyther that is four times weak to rock. You you turn out, and instead of switching into the Tauros that is resisting my rock move and is faster and kills me, you swap to the Talon Flame? What the fuck? Are you stupid? This just killed my whole mood. You just deserve to die. I don't even care about you anymore. Fuck you, we're in Fall Arbor Town. Bro, and this guy's pissed that I killed his family. Get over it, man. Vito leads with an Alakazam. We're leading with the Lopunny because we do not die to an Aura Spear no matter what. We're just gonna U-turn out, get a little chip damage and break the Focus Sash, and then we're going to switch into our Floatzel who can finish him off with an Aqua Jet. The Balloon comes out and it wants to bullet seed our Floatzel, so we have to switch over to our Yan Mega to tank the Coconuts. Coconut! Because we outspeed the Balloon and it knows it's gonna die, it goes for a Mach Punch to get a little chip before we take it out in one hit. 
Swallow comes out, Ass Clapper comes in, tanks the Heat Wave and the Boom Burst, and puts him in the dirt. Crowback comes out and it wants to Giga Drain our Ass Clapper, so Big Chomp is gonna come in and tank some Sludge Bombs and Giga Drains. Now, if he can't Thunder Punch him down to get the kill, it's all right, but in this case, we get it. Crawdont comes out, and because our Kingdra doesn't die to anything he has, we send them in just to see what he throws at us. Now that we know it's a close combat, we don't necessarily want to kill him, we're just going to take an Aqua Jet, flip turn out, and we're going to kill him with our Yon Mega. Yon Mega comes in, he's going to tank one more Aqua Jet from the Crawdont, but not to worry because he's just going to Giga Drain and take all of that HP right back. Last, the Aggron comes in, and I was kind of surprised that Yon Mega does this much damage, but once the Aggron Mega evolves, I actually do quite a bit with Signal Beam here. Signal Beam takes him down to just over half, and we get a confusion, but it doesn't help us in the end because he is still able to get off his Autonomize. Now that the Aggron is faster, he hits me with an Iron Head while I go for another Signal Beam, but I only take him down to just above, about like 10% HP. But we have a problem because I don't outspeed beat him, and the only priority move I have is on my Floatzel. I decide, fuck it, I'm just gonna sack my Yon Mega, worst case scenario, and I go for another Signal Beam. Uh, I don't die to the Iron Head, but I flinch, so now we are really in danger. At this point, I realize the only way I'm getting out of this Deathless is if I switch in my Floatzel and he gets an Aqua Jet crit. So we hope for the best here. We switch in our Float Soul to tank the Iron Head, and it brings it down to just about 100 HP. We hold our breath and we go for the Aqua Jet, but it's not enough. And Float Soul perishes to the body press. Is what I would say if we didn't hit the 1 in 16 chance to not die. It is incredible. So we finish him off with an Aqua Jet, and wouldn't you believe it, it's a critical hit. You couldn't do that sooner! Fuck you and your family. <laughs> Our reward for winning that fight is an encounter. So everyone please welcome Girthquake. The tower from earlier also had a fossil and I brought it to Rustboro where the scientist will turn it into a Pokemon for me. Now, unluckily for me, it turns into a Kranidos. He's like cool, but he looks like he eats crayons. I broke into a stranger's home and threatens this little girl into giving me a TM for earth power. I then proceeded to enter the strange cave in behind their house. In said cave is one of every fossil that you can obtain. And because I'm a little bitch, I decided I would use one of these fossils as my encounter for this area. After paying another visit to my favorite scientist back in Rustboro, I revived my Aerodactyl, whose name will be a special surprise that will help us later. Yeah, so I took it day off from playing and I decided to boot up some Terraria and I added a mod that makes my guy dummy thick. Just just thought you guys should know that. I really couldn't resist because I just absolutely love using Aerodactyl for this part of the game. Nothing more poetic than Rock Slide using Rock Slide. Most of the trainers on this route were pretty easy, so I'm not gonna talk about it. I don't give a shit. Here's my encounter. He's thick, he's round, he's fat. The real challenge of this route is when you jump off this ledge and you are now stuck in a gauntlet of several trainers to which you cannot change your party Pokemon. The gauntlet can be a little challenging if you don't have the right Pokemon in your box to choose. Now, while a lot of the trainers are pretty simple and can be taken care of with only one or two Pokemon in your party, if you lose someone in a battle, then you are now stuck with one less Pokemon to defeat the remainder of the trainers, which may or may not end your run. After breaking up a fight between some pirates, I decide to get my encounter now rather than later, and I get the Dawn. Now, I just have one question, and are you battle armor or are you sturdy? Oh, wait, hold on, let me just clean these trainers up real quick. Uh, boom, uh, bam, bah, bah. Pick up some more fucking berries and prepare myself for the last leg of this split. And uh, hey, Arch, you now you can have a perfectly fine sexual relationship with your dog or your horse, not with your chicken, no. But with your dog or your horse, so you provided the dog is big enough, uh, you know. How do you find the lines of which animals you consider, like in your words, like find for sexual experience? Versus purely, not. purely, purely personal taste. Okay, so there is no restrictions, I guess, in that regard, in your mind. That's a really funny way of looking at it. All I can say: certain animals appeal to me sexually, certain animals don't. You don't normally think about this. You maybe think about how they taste, what you're going to have for dinner. Now, for instance, uh, bovines, cow, no appeal to me. 
you know, horses. Oh, I could, I could screw a horse. And recently, about six months ago, I had the, I'd never, never been attracted to goats. And I was staying at over a friend's house for the night. And I went out for a walk and a neighbor of his had some goats, which weren't normally attractive to me. But I saw one goat there, a female goat. She was tri-covered, white, brown, and black. And I thought she was the most remarkable goat I had ever seen. And she was female, and I swear, I could have jumped that fence and had sex with that goat that night. So top of Mount Chimney, we get a little lemon lad, immediately preceded by a double battle with Team Magma. This double battle was pretty irritating just because you have to try and work around the Ndidi and the Meow Stick, but once I kind of figured out the pathing, it wasn't too much of an issue. But that's not the end of our issues because now there's this asshole and his Espeon. He leads with a Torkoal that has Quick Claw and Explosions, so we lead with Don Fan, knock off the Quick Claw, and because we're actually sturdy, uh, we just don't die to any of his moves, even if they crit. And after he Solar Beams us, we simply just hit him with a high horsepower and take him out. Espeon comes in, so I swap over to my Lantern, who can tank whatever it throws at me, and it hits me with a Psychic. Psychic's the highest damaging move, so I know it's going to use it again. So I swap over to my Crawdaunt, who resists it and also baits out the Dazzling Gleam, which is the lowest damaging move that I can swap my Aerodactyl into, who can then take out the Espeon with a Crunch. Victory Bell comes in and it's faster than me because it has Chlorophyll and it wants to Solar Blade my Aerodactyl. So I swap over to my Agron to tank the hit, avoid the Sleep Powder even though I had a Lumberry, and I just hit him with a Heat Crash. Absol comes out, wants to Mega Evolve, so I swap over to my Hitmontop, who manages to just avoid the Fire Blast, so uh, fake out, Mach Punch, you're dead. Armaldo comes out last, we hit him with a couple Rolling Kicks, but once it becomes unsafe for us, we just swap over to Aerodactyl and finish him off. Easy clap, no worries. Yeah, it's not that easy, we still have one more boss fight to go. Maxi leads with a sturdy Crustle with a red card, and I didn't check this beforehand because I'm a fucking idiot, but I thought I could just hit him with a flip turn and choose who I swap into, but the red card just makes me swap into somebody random here instead. Uh, the line isn't really in shambles to say, but it's uh, gonna be a little riskier from here now. So I really can't stop the Crustle from setting up stealth rocks and a layer of spikes, but I'm able to take him out with my Caracosta, which is still gonna bait in the Zarude, which is what I was planning on. Because my Excavalier is pretty tanky, he can tank some uh, chip damage from the spikes and the stealth rocks and tank some hits from Zarude and just take him out with a single X scissor. Aerodactyl comes out, so we swap over to our Excadrill, who can easily tank a Stone Edge. Now, what really pisses me off about this Aerodactyl is why the fuck does it have Aqua Tail? I, I, I had to take the risk here. I really didn't have another choice, but, you know, crits are fictional and don't exist, so we're all good. Komoa comes out, and I swap over to my Zatu, who can easily four times resist the body press, and is exactly one HP safe from a max roll crit from his highest damaging move. But we get an air slash flinch, so he can take this out, no issue whatsoever. Camerupt comes out and wants to Mega Evolve, and all it can do is flamethrower or rock slide my Zatu, so I swap over to Kingdra, who could take that no issue whatsoever, and just simply one-shot it. Asshole comes out, and Kingdra can just flip turn away so they don't have to suffer the wrath of this piece of shit. Now, I have to pay for my sins here, uh, by fucking up the start of this fight, and I have to sack somebody here. And sadly, the only Mon in my party that can do this with only one sack is Donphan. As much as I don't want to get rid of him, he has knockoff to get rid of the Wobbuffet's Berry, and, you know, there's a chance that I could go for a rock slide and get a flinch and maybe save his life, but that's not what ends up happening, so rest in peace, our brave soldier. The sacrifice was not in vain because Kingdra can come in and take him out. And with that, we're finally almost to the fifth gym. But first, I'm going to take this cool rock that I found. The path between Mount Chimney and Lava Ridge is really short and easy, but here's a cool encounter I got, and by cool I mean not cool at all. Fuck this guy. But at least after all that, we finally made it to Lava Ridge. Holy shit, it takes so long to get here. 
but at least we're close to getting Surf, which will really open up the game. After hanging with my bitches, I talk to this old lady and she gives me an egg. In this egg is one of three of the original Hoenn starters. Now, I really wanted Mudkip. I've gotten Torchic in the past too many times and it is kind of dog shit. But thankfully, my prayers were actually answered. Just gotta make sure I keep this guy safe. He's not allowed to touch any grass. The only thing we have left to do now is take on the gym. And some of the trainers in this gym are a pain in the ass, especially this first trainer with his Cinderace that will just change his type and is faster than almost everything you will have. The, the worst part of the fight is the Chandelure that's in the back that will trap and kill your Pokemon with Shadow Tag if you're not careful in routing this fight. There's also a Blissey. And while Blissey is typically easily killed with a single fighting move because its defense sucks, this one has counter and an item that reduces the power of a fighting move. So you gotta be very careful, otherwise this thing will just slap you across the face. Now it took a while to kind of figure out what I wanted to do exactly for this fight, but this is where you will learn exactly where Aerodactyl gets his name. Alright, so this is a double battle and Flannery leads with a Salazzle and a Charizard. Now the Charizard is gonna Mega Evolve, which will set up Sun for the rest of the battle, and the Salazzle has a Focus Sash and Fake Out. So I Fake Out the Charizard and go for a Rock Slide with my Aerodactyl, because if my Aerodactyl gets faked out, it doesn't really matter and we could just try again next turn. So now, I don't want to kill both of them at the same time, so I'm gonna waste a turn with Monkey Mach Punching the Charizard, and then we let off our first Rock Slide. So I thought incorrectly and the Marowak comes out instead of the Entei or the Incineroar. You know what? Whatever. Oopsie daisies, right? So the Marowak sees killing rolls on both my guys, but it sees a guaranteed kill on Infernape. So I figured I'm just going to rock slide again, swap out the Infernape and cross my fingers. Now, luckily for me, he does actually poltergeist the Azumarill because I really don't want my Aerodactyl to die. Now, Azumarill does take quite a bit of damage and I was definitely dead to crit, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta live life on the edge. Entei comes out and I can now turn this disadvantageous situation into something actually really good because both of the Mons on the other side of the field see a kill on my Azumarill, which means they are both targeting that slot. I go for another Rock Slide, take out the Marowak, and the Entei is left to just solar beam my ejaculator. Wow, that really hurt to say. Incineroar comes out to intimidate my guys and fake me out, so I swap out my Aerodactyl to keep him alive. Crawdont comes in and is gonna tank a Stone Edge from the Entei. And because the Entei sees a solar beam kill on my Crawdont, and the Incineroar can do whatever the fuck he wants because I don't really care, I'm just gonna protect and do some chip damage to the Entei with my ejaculator. Now that Antea is 1 HP, I can just Aqua Jet to get the kill and safely swap in my Aerodactyl. My Crawdont and my Aerodactyl do not die to Incineroar. The last Mon Talonflame comes in, but you already know what the fuck we about to do. Hit him with the meatballs. Yeah, let me get it one more time for the people in the back. Hit him with the meatballs. I guess I was trying too hard. Nah, bitch, you're not trying hard enough. Ooh, ah, hit him with the shuffle. Ah, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Yo, what up, gang? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> now you speak in my language. I will surely not abuse this power. <sighs> I need her. I'm gonna come. Yippee! Yippee! What are you doing? What's going on here? No! Woohoo! Mitochondria! Milady, milady, milady. Oh no! Plum, 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 plum. Plum. Dick! Me when your mom. Me when your mom. 
Fuck you, YouTube copyright. The path to Winona's gym is a lot shorter than that of Flannery's. Now, I will say that the first few trainers once you cross this little body of water are more of just an appetizer of what's to come. And just like a Minecraft YouTuber, here comes Steven once again trying to talk to a miner. There is only one route between us and the sixth gym badge, but this route has rain the entire way through, and it makes for some pretty interesting fights. Like this guy who's insistent on showing me the true potential of him and his Pokemon. What does he have, you might ask? Well, he leads with a love disc, and then he has a love disc, and then in the back, he has a another love disc. You should find another hobby. I decide to surf for my encounter on this route, and I encounter a Jellicent. Now, having an extra ghost type in the box is always helpful, and this guy is a man of culture. And boy, am I glad to have a Swift Swim Ludicolo on my team, as having Swift Swim, which will make me faster than pretty much everything on this route, and Fake Out is a pretty damn good combination. Oh, brother. Maybe I was wrong about the theme of this route. Maybe every trainer here is just trying to be silly, like this guy who just brings three Wormadams to this fight. Yeah, man, that's gonna make you go really far in life. Don't get me wrong, there are some trainers on this route that can be a little tough, like this one that has a Sylveon, which had me just kind of switching out back and forth, baiting out moves until I could chip it down. Or this random bug trainer who leads with a Beautifly, but has an Araquanid in the back. Now this Araquanid has moves to buff its defense and it has Mirror Coat, so good luck hitting it with a special move or you're gonna die. Thankfully, we have our Breloom who puts him in a marijuana-induced coma and beats him to death. I was gonna talk about this next double battle, which has one trainer that uses explosion mons, and the other uses mons that are immune to the explosion. However, I didn't realize that this trainer really likes kids. Excuse me, what's the actual f- I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable out here in Hoenn. I didn't realize that this is where all the Minecraft YouTubers went. I figured I need to lay low from all the kid diddlers, so I head into this building that is filled with pirates. As evil as they might be, at least they aren't going to touch me, but that won't stop me from touching them. At this point, I forget if I've mentioned this already, but the evil teams in this game really love to abuse gimmicky items like uh, choice bands or focus sashes or quick claws. You get the point, right? Luckily for me, the Weather Institute grunts aren't too bad. Um, I, I really just kind of had like good mons for this part of the game. Uh, the only one that is kind of tricky is this double battle at the end. They lead with an Alolan Ninetales that sets up Hail and wants to Aura Veil, and then they have an Arctivision and Dracozolt that both have Slush Rush and want to outspeed and just decimate my team, but if you have good routing and you can bait the moves properly, then you can kind of pick apart the team pretty quick because each Grunt only has two Mons. Alright, you guys all knew this was coming, I gotta fight a boss, so Shelly leads with a Mind Shao and I lead with my Aerodactyl. The Mind Shao is gonna go for a fake out, but they cannot stop me from instantly killing them with a dual wing beat. Nihilego comes out and I swap to my Excadrill because it wants to hit me with a Meatball Beam. I expect the Nihilego to go for a Stealth Rock, but instead it goes for a Power Gem. However, I still go for a Rapid Spin, which raises my speed and allows me to one-shot it with a high horsepower the next turn. Choice Band Dragonite comes in, and I swap in my Azumarill. Now it decides to lock itself into an Aqua Tail, and similar to two old people in a retirement home slapping each other with wet napkins, this battle ends with the Dragonite on the floor, wet, soggy, and defeated. Tornadus comes out, and because there's no stealth rock, this allows me to send in my Aerodactyl risk-free and one-shot it with a rock slide. Lantern comes in, and now we gotta play a little risky. I swap in my Breloom and take a risk that he's not gonna Ice Beam or hit me with a Thunderbolt Paralysis. I put him to sleep and beat him to death with a Seed Bomb. It was crucial to take that risk because I need Breloom to deal with this Blastoise before he can set up a Shell Smash. I put him to sleep and start beating on him with some Seed Bombs, praying that he does not wake up. Luckily for me, the Blastoise stays asleep and I'm able to take him down with no issues whatsoever. 
Call me Jack Sparrow the way that I'm the greatest pirate that has ever lived. The head scientist rewards me for saving him and his crew with his very own crusty sock. Now, luckily for me, his crusty sock is holding a life orb, which is very valuable for the remainder of this run. Now, all we gotta do is prepare to finish our journey to Fortree, where we can take on the sixth gym leader. Do you mind, bro? Our reward for winning at the Weather Institute is a double battle with our rival. This double battle is not like any others as it is during a thunderstorm, so there is rain and electric terrain. Turn one, the Swampert Mega Evolves, so I fake out the Gyarados and take out the Swampert with my Ludicolo. Toxicroak comes in and it wants to gunk shot my Ludicolo, so I swap it out for Aggron and protect my Togemaru to keep it safe, as I don't want to take any Waterfall Chip from the Gyarados. Toxicroak sees a fast kill on my Aggron with Cross Chop, so I Mega Evolve it to prevent that from happening. I take out the Gyarados with the Zing Zap, the Toxicroak misses his Cross Chop anyways. Meanwhile, Aggron goes for a little bit of chip damage with a Heavy Slam. Magnezone comes in and it sees a kill on my Aggron with a Thunder, so I swap it into Excadrill to be immune, and because my Togemaru is faster than Toxicroak, it goes for a Vacuum Wave for some chip before I take it out with a Zing Zap. Dragapult swaps in, and because both Magnezone and Dragapult see a kill on my Togemaru, I go for a Spiky Shield and swap back in my Ludicolo. Swampert comes in, and I gave it an Electric Seed to boost its defense once it hits the field. Ludicolo fakes out the Magnezone, and Dragapult is just not a threat. The next turn, because Ludicolo has Swift Swim, I knock off the Dragon Gem from the Dragapult to reduce its damage for this turn. It goes for a Breaking Swipe to do a little chip and lower my attack, but it's not enough to keep my Swampert from mopping the Magnezone. Alolan Executor comes in, so I double swap my Mons to avoid anyone dying. The Dragapult still goes for a Breaking Swipe, but it doesn't know how useless that is. Lopunny fakes out the Executor, and Dragapult goes for another Breaking Swipe, only for my Akron to come in and finish it off with a Heavy Slam. Now that Executor is the only Mon that remains, this battle is pretty much over. I U-turn out with my Lopunny and bring in my Excadrill, and he and my Aggron finish this off pretty easily. Beating my rival's ass gave me access to the HM Fly. However, I cannot use it until I beat the sixth gym. So let's go do just that. The only things that I can do before I enter the gym is go and train my regular Weezing for a Galarian Weezing. And then there's two trainers on the other side of town that I can fight before I can get one last encounter. Of everything I expected to get in this grass, it was not a Volcarona as this has a 1% chance encounter rate. However, I'm not going to complain. Welcome to the team. And now, we finally enter the sixth gym. The trainer's in here. <laughs> uh, no problem whatsoever, right? I don't... I don't want to talk about it. After my Agron decided he didn't want to be friends with me anymore, it's about time to fight Winona. So this is the first time I've actually decided to use some rare candies to set my Aerodactyl two levels over the level cap. So let's see how it plays out, right? So, Winona leads with a Staraptor that has a Choice Scarf, so I'm not outspeeding this thing. I start with my Volcarona to bait it to use Brave Bird, and I swap into my Corviknight to tank the hits. Now, I didn't really have too perfect of a counter for this, so what I decided to do for these turns is let the Staraptor Brave Bird and do a little damage, chip away at its health, and then go back and forth between using Roost and Body Press for some damage. After a few turns of this, the Staraptor ends up killing himself with Brave Bird Recoil. However, he doesn't go out without a critical hit bringing me down to 1 HP. We did account for a worst case scenario, so I roosted this turn to keep me at the appropriate HP to bait in the Volcarona. Arcanine comes in to tank the fiery dance that it's throwing at me, however this does raise its special attack by one stage. The Volcarona outspeeds me and hits me with a Psychic, and uh... Wow, what a great start to this battle. I hit it with the Rock Slide to bring it down to its Focus Sash, and then the next turn I hit it with an Extreme Speed for the KO. Halucha comes in, but this is where we are very thankful to have the Galarian Weezing. If we had gotten crit more than once, this would have been an issue, but Weezing is able to take him out with two Strange Steams. 
Celestina comes out and wants to heavy slam my Weezing, so I bring out the monkey who tanks the heavy slam, hits him with a fake out for a huge amount of chip damage, and then finishes him off with a flare blitz that just barely has a guaranteed killing roll. Shaman comes out, and I really wanted to give it some chip damage, or maybe even just completely wipe it out with my Corviknight. However, after getting hit with a Seed Flare, which lowers my special defense by two stages, I then get flinched by an Air Slash, so I have no other option but to bring in my Aerodactyl early. However, this is completely fine because I resist the Air Slash, and I can take it out in one hit with a Life Orb Ice Fang. The Altaria comes in, and I swap over to my Volcarona. It Mega Evolves, which gives it the ability Pixelate, and it hits me with a Fairy-type Piper Voice. I hit it with a Mystical Fire to lower its special attack, and tank an Earthquake from it. I then proceed to hit it with a U-Turn for some extra chip, and swap back into my Aerodactyl. Now that its special attack is lowered, and Aerodactyl with a Life Orb, I should be able to safely take this out if I don't get crit. Thankfully, we avoid the crit, and Winona goes down with no issues whatsoever. It's still crazy to me how there have been three boss fights in such close proximity of one another. This split has been pretty damn stressful, but, whoa, would you believe me if I told you it only gets worse? Ooh, ah, ah, get the fuck out of here. Is it okay if I touch you? Hey guys, before we start, I have to address some allegations real quick. Yes, I did acquire the Megastone for Lopunny. And no, I am not wearing pants. After tossing Winona's salad, we get to meet with our favorite child predator, Steven. He gives us a magical device that allows us to see the invisible Kecleons that have been blocking our path. This allows us to get a Kecleon of our own, as well as finally enter the scorched slab. I call Cable Company, said they send theirs best guy to fix the problems. Little did I know, they send Larry. With the exception of maybe one or two trainers between Fortree and Lily Cove, none of these guys are really difficult. So I'm gonna gloss over this route because I don't wanna waste my time editing to talk about literally nothing and just me mopping up a bunch of scrubs. Besides, we got way more important things to discuss in this split of the game that is far more interesting and stress-inducing than this route. But no explanation of mine can justify the pain that I felt going through this part of the game. So so it's best that I just show you. So I'm a silly goose and I forgot to hit the record button to show the last few battles before I got to Lily Cove. But now that we're here, we got some encounters. I'm the contest lady and I sure love contests. This is my friend Ironheart and he's the epitome of smartness, but I think he will display even more smartness. Can I just have a poke block? Oh, you don't have one? Get out of my face, broke bitch. Shit, my bad. What's up, Ironheart? <laughs> I head over to the contest hall where I talk to the receptionist and receive a Pokeblock case. Getting this item will allow me to enter the Safari Zone where I can choose one encounter. But something tells me that I have unfinished business here. You know what? No. I'm the coolest there is. I'm the master of coolness. Oh. Alright, maybe I'm not the master. Maybe I'm the normal coolest. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! So happy to be here, yeah. Boo! Boo! What? Smash! Boo! Who the fuck is this? Boo! Get them out of here! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Wait, why am I not getting any hearts? Hey, guys. Come on. All right, Ronar, impress the judges. Iron defense? Are you stupid? They fucking hated it. What you got, Tay-Tay? Agility? Ooh, that shit sucked. What? You like that shit? It's all right, watch this, watch this, watch this. A boom! Yeah! Yep, yep, that's what I'm fucking talking about, baby. All right, check this one out. Check this one out. Yeah. Uh huh. Yup. Hey, what the fuck? Okay. Again? What? 
Yeah! Yeah, fuck you, Tay-Tay! You lost points, you dipshit! All right, I won't lie, that was pretty cool. Okay, yeah, he deserves that. That was pretty sick. Bro, what was that? Are you bribing the judge or something? Are you fucking kidding me? Nah. Nah. No, bro did not hustle. Bro did not hustle! Come on, man. Do something else, bro. That was boring as fuck. Yeah, all right, we'll take three, sure. What? What? Wait, 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 guys, look, <laughs> look at the punch, look at the punch, look at the punch. Guys, please, 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 please. <laughs> guys, please, please, I can't lose. Bro, 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 I'm not gonna lose to an Aaron. Okay, last chance, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, oh, oh bam, yeah, woo. Yeah. Fuck! Bro, if you don't cut the shit with the agility. Okay, even I could do that, dude. Come on. That wasn't that cool. It wasn't that cool. Wow, vital throw. Really, really creative there, man. Really creative. Really awesome. Oh, they don't like it. Oh. <laughs> Aaron, I swear to Fuck if you use iron defense one more time. All right, just tell me I won. Just tell me I won. I already know I won. Just give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Okay. Yup. Uh-huh. Preliminary. Yeah, that's just like, that's just fucked because that's just cheating. How are they going to like get points before I do? Bro. You are not fucking for real right now. Uh now that that's done, we get to go to the Safari Zone and get an encounter, and the table that I chose gets me a Blastoise. Hooray! Yay! His name is Astoy. I also managed to pick up a Metacham, who's not very useful now, but will be incredibly powerful later on. My encounter for Lily Cove was also just this muck, but he's, he's, he's not gonna be here for very long. I can't believe I didn't mention, we actually get to go to the department store. Come on, man. Dickbag leads with a Garchomp, so I bring out the Ass Toy, and you know what we about to do. We're going Mega Ass Toy. Hell yeah. Stealth rock me all you want, little bitch. I'm just gonna kill you with the Dragon Poles. Get out of here. I don't care if your Alakazam has a Focus Sash. I'm gonna hit him with a Surf, and I'm gonna send in the demon himself, Mr. Seaman. Oh my fucking god, what is that back sprite? <laughs> just just take take the dazzling gleam and then knock him off. There's only one way to take out this Weavile. Thank god I never have to fucking look at that guy again. I send out my Ludicolo, so he sends out his Zapdos. Now I'd like to take this thing out sooner rather than later. However, this has horrible consequences. Senpai, please notice me. I watch Asian cartoons. I'm a weeaboo. I bring out Blastoise again because this will bait out a Thunder Punch from the Mel Metal, and then I can just swap over to Swamper. I'm immune to the Thunder Punch, and then I can just take him out quick and easy with some Earthquakes. His Swamper comes in last, and I have Ludicolo, so he really can't touch me. You are such a little bitch. The department store doesn't even have anything that's going to be immediately useful to us, so we just carry on to Mount Pyre. On our way, though, we can get two encounters. One of them is the most forgettable Dragon-type Pokemon in existence, and the other one is just a little noodle. The most difficult part about the first half of Mount Pyre is not necessarily the trainer battles, but more so having to run back and forth between the Lily Cove Pokemon Center and Mount Pyre. You know me, I love jumping in holes, so let's get at it. It. it appears I have locked myself into a trainer gauntlet. There are two trainers and then there are two aqua grunts. Uh oh. The only difficult part about the first trainer is this Corsola, and it's just kind of like an asshole. It doesn't really do anything, it just kind of sits there. And then the second trainer just has fighting types, so Aerodactyl is, yeah, this 
yeah, this one wasn't difficult. Yeah, but now we have to drop down yet another hole and fight two Aqua Grunts back to back without being able to swap our party around or heal in between the battles. Leading Togunamaru for these two fights is pretty easy because I could take out the Crawdont with no issues whatsoever, bait in the Gumshoes to get an Earthquake out, and then I can swap around and work around the Kingdra's Draco Meteors. Leading Togunamaru on the next fight lets me fake out and break the Dragonite's multi-scale, and then I can swap over to Aerodactyl and kill it with an Ice Fang. We do some switching to maneuver around the Avalug's Body Press and Stone Edges. Galissapod can take out the Floatzel for free, and then we take out the Gyarados with a Rock Slide. After beating that little gauntlet, we make it to the summit of Mount Pyre, where every trainer here has permanent Tailwind set up, meaning that every Mon that I face is now twice as fast. The only way to make it through this safely is to abuse priority moves and to have mons that can resist everything that they throw at me, which is easier said than done. This is also where I get my encounter and I get the soul sucker. There is a tough double battle that has a Dracovish that's set up in Tailwind, but as long as you have things that can resist it, like quad resisting water or resisting dragon moves, then you'll be fine. Oh, good heavens. It's you again. Your timing is impeccable. It's almost as if you're following Team Aqua around and is watching our every move. Is it a mere coincidence? Do I need to worry about you, Feet? I need to know if you're a threat to Team Aqua's operation. <gasps> Hey! I'm here to threaten the Bakus operation! <laughs> Bro, aren't you so based? Welcome to Pyre Tag. Archie leads with an Urshifu and a High Dragon. And I didn't know that Mount Pyre was an airport because I brought a bomb. Haha, <laughs> works every time. Archie throws a curveball at me and I'm unprepared for this. Holy fuck, that was a cool flip. Dragalji doesn't see a kill on anybody, but the Rattam definitely wants to go for a blizzard. So I fake out the Rattam, and luckily the Dragalji goes for a protect. Even luckier for me is that my Rhyperior teammate actually kills the Rattam. Yeah, this battle's pretty much over now. This is perfect because Stack Attacka comes in and my Rhyperior sees a high horsepower kill on both of them. So I simply just close combat the Stack Attacka for a free kill, and the Rhyperior kills the Dragalji. Easy peasy. Sharpedo comes in, and I have no reason to play this risky at all, so I just go for a protect and let my Rhyperior die so the Venusaur can come in. All right, Shell, I'm swapping to my Swamper. All you gotta do is kill him, okay? All you, that's all you gotta do. All right, you can Mega Evolve, that's fine. All you gotta do is kill him. Shell, you are fucking useless. All right, it's fine, just, just do it this turn. This turn, this turn you got it, right, Shell? Can I, can I trust you? Thank you! Oh my god, you were scaring me. Yeah, get fucked. What are you gonna do about it? You're pulling out? Oh, I would never. That is so fetch. Please fuck off. Most people refer to this next part of the game as the magma hideout split. I like to refer to it as the cock and ball torture cave. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll keep going. The first handful of trainers in this cave? Whack! The fact that they all use gimmick items like Bright Powder and Quick Claw? Whack! Having to deal with permanent Magma Storm? Whack! But the encounter that I get for this cave? Tight fuck! If you aren't aware of what Magma Storm is, basically, you take 10% chip damage after every single turn, and you cannot switch out your Pokemon. The only way that you can switch out your Pokemon is if you either are holding a Shed Shell, or you have moves like U-Turn or Flip Turn or something that swaps your guy out. The only other option is to let your Mon die, which is going to happen quite a bit in this part of the game for me, as I really didn't have any other options, nor did I realize that Shed Shell is not a consumable and you can use it multiple times. Um, that probably would have saved one or two of my guys, but I really don't give a shit. This is the part of the game where you have to play increasingly risky with your guys. And it's actually a good thing to have a bunch of useless mons sitting in your box because I can just have like three or four good mons on a team, use them to wipe everyone else. And then when I need a human sacrifice, I just throw in the shitters. This does, however, still mean that I am not immune to bullshit happening to me, though I do get a little lucky through this fight because this could have gone a whole lot worse. 
Wow, a boss fight in the cock and ball cave? Who would have guessed? Tabitha leads with a Blacephalon and I leave with a low punny. Now the Blacephalon has a focus sash, so I need to figure out a way to work around that. But luckily for me, Mega Low Punny gets the ability Scrappy so I can fake it out, hit it with a return, and it's dead. Yon Mega comes in next, and this thing has speed boost, but luckily for me, I'm faster than it to begin with. And this is where we make our first sack of the fight. Electrex comes in to tank the Air Slash, and sadly, he is the only guy in my box that can take this thing out somewhat safely. Though we do risk getting flinched by an Air Slash the next turn, the Yon Mega just goes for a Giga Drain, which allows my Electros to take him out with a single Thunderbolt. Hitmonlee comes in, and it is incredibly important that this thing sees a fast kill on me with low kick. Therefore, it will not use its normal gem and activate its unburden. This allows us to guarantee that my Mega Low Honey will be faster, and it can actually just one-shot it with a return, which is pretty nice, not gonna lie. Victini comes in, but this thing has an eject pack, so whenever its stats are lowered, it's gonna switch out for free. This is going to start a chain reaction of switching between me and Tabitha, which results in Tabitha having his Snorlax out and me bringing out my Beware. Once again, Beware is the only thing in my box that can take the Snorlax out that I am comfortable with losing. So thank you once again, friend, for being helpful this entire run up to this point. But just as one last fuck you to this Victini, Beware can actually just get off a of baby doll eyes, which lowers the Victini's attack by one stage. Yeah. Get fucked, idiot. We're now in a really good position where my Lopunny can come back in and easily take out the Victini. And the Mega Absol in the back is not a threat at all because we can just U-turn out, take it down really low, and then easily finish it off with Galissapod. Oh shit, what up, gang? Oh, fuck. Yeah, nah. Oh, you brought the red orb? Oh, fuck, dude. Bro, that's blue! All right, someone's gotta teach this man his colors. Pyroar, you were a part of the original squad, but now you gotta go out in a blaze of glory. And by that, I mean Groudon is setting up a drought and you are gonna hit him with a life orb overheat. You didn't come to as many fights as I had wished, but Pyroar, you were a great addition to the team, so farewell. We bring in Batman, who just outspeeds the Garchomp and straight up kills it with a Draco Meteor. Naganadel comes in because it has a choice scarf and it actually outspeeds me, and this is perfect because I'm baiting it to use Dragon Pulse. However, Batman must die, so I'm sorry, Gotham will find another hero. Naganadel's hidden weakness is British people, so I bring in my Excavalier to resist the Dragon Pulses he will throw at me and finish him off with some drill runs. I wasn't sure exactly which Mon would be coming in next, however, I did prepare for each situation. In this case, Tangrowth comes in, and little did I know that the greatest weakness to British people is the sun. Infernape comes in, and it cannot die to anything that Tangrowth throws at me. However, I can use an overheat and put him in the dirt. Mew comes in, but because I have a Shed Shell, I can swap out to my Hydreigon because it wants to use Psychic Fangs on me. The Mew does not see a kill with Flare Blitz, as that's the only attack it has that can hit me. It goes for a Dragon Dance, but I hit it with a Dark Pulse, and then on the following turn, I can hit it with a U-Turn to take it out. This comes down to a 1v1 between Lopunny and Houndoom. I Mega Evolve my Lopunny, and likewise, he Mega Evolves his Houndoom. I hit him with a fake out for a little chip, and yes, this is coming down to me hitting a jump kick. Oh, thank fuck. Okay. All right. Got it. Woo! Safe to say that after making it through this cave, I can no longer feel my balls. My spider senses are tingling, and I can feel that something is wrong over here in Slateport. It's either that, or I need to go to a hospital. Come to realize those damn pirates are at it again. Not sure why a lot of people think Aqua Hideout is really difficult, 
because I thought this was like 10 times easier than the cock and ball cave. Not only do they give me a master ball, but they also give me balls. Like, I know that they still use gimmick items like bright powders and quick claws and all that stupid shit, but you don't even have to deal with magma storm, nor do you even have to fight a difficult boss here. <laughs> I only took one risk during this fight, and it was because I was just tired and lazy, and I just didn't notice it, so oh well. Oh, look, look, he leads with a mammal swine that has a focus sash. You lead monkey, fake out, overheat, he's dead. Wait, wait, what? No, no, not the Drake fish that only knows one move. <laughs> if only I had something that quad resists water. Oh, no. A dragapult? If only I had a fairy type. Oh God! Cartana's the only thing on this team that's like somewhat intimidating. And yeah, I made a mistake and had to risk a night slash crit because I'm just like stupid and ignorant. But at the same time, even if my Volcarona dies, it doesn't change anything. So, oh no, not the Raikou. I hope it doesn't try to scald me. Swap to Galissapod, tank the scalds, bait the Thunderbolt, swap to Swamper, one shot him like the bitch he is. This Gyarados is cringe. He will never be Mega Evolved. Oh my god, I was so wrong. I take it back. Let's save the time. I don't care about your waterfall. Somehow I get the killing roll with the first impression. I'm not going to complain. Fuck off. So that's it. You're just going to... You're just going to stand there? You're not going to... You're not going to go with them? Um... Uh, okay, all right. Since we're only a few trainers away from getting to Moss Deep, I wanted to talk about the Elite Four for a second. O of all of the people that beat the Elite Four, you take one look at their teams and you start to notice a trend. Oh my God, you beat the Elite Four with Urshifu and Primarina and Dragapult or Latios? It's like, oh my God, bro, like that's crazy. I would have never expected that. Look, I'll continue this rant once I get to the Elite Four. So-called free thinkers choosing Urshifu for their Elite Four teams. I heckin' love Moss Deep City. Yo, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this rock has some sort of significance to the scientists here. Um... All right, why'd you have to bring race into it, man? Before I could enter Shoal Cave to get one last encounter, there is a double battle blocking the way. However, I thought it would be a little more difficult than it actually was. I guess I just had a good box for this fight. I'm not sure. Whatever. There's some good mons that I can get in this cave, but... You know, fuck it, I'll take a femboy. The theme of this gym is that every battle up until the leader is a double battle, and this makes for some pretty interesting fights. Now, I do kind of make a fucky wucky. Um, so the second trainer battle in this gym has one trainer that loves to try and set up Trick Room, and then the other trainer that just kind of exists. And as long as we can just kind of keep dancing around the Trick Room Pokemon and baiting kills with the other, we can pretty quickly and easily eliminate three Mons on one side, and then it just becomes a 2v1 for the rest of the battle. Though we do lose our Kecleon in this fight because I got a little careless, and I didn't realize how that would affect the gym leader for me because I can now no longer do the heist for leftovers. Womp womp. Surely one of these teleporters up ahead will take me back to the start so I don't have to walk all the way there, right? No, I'm now locked in a 5v6. Fuck me, right? Now, luckily for me, my Mons can handle this pretty well, but I do remember that this fight has some broken AI. Now, I don't know how to take advantage of it, but it somehow just kind of worked out for me. I'm, I'm not even really sure what happens, but what's supposed to happen this fight is the Crocodile wants to fling a Salak Berry onto the Gothitelle, which would then in turn increase its speed with a weakness policy, basically making it a raid boss. However, he just kills it because I got it down to really low HP. And now the Crocodile's AI is stuck and he just keeps wanting to press fling for several turns, even though he doesn't have an item. Uh, so the fight's kind of free from this point, but I think even if he wasn't pressing fling, we would have been fine. So, oh well. And I can't forget to mention the last double battle in this gym, which is quite silly. What do they lead with? Boom, level one Meryl. <laughs>
Now, don't be deceived because it's kind of goofy. The Meryl, it, 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 the Meryl just wants to kill itself, but the Passimian is going to inherit the Meryl's ability, which is huge power. So the gimmick of this fight is that every Mon on the other side wants to try and inherit that huge power ability. So as long as you can prevent that from happening, you'll be okay. Ironically, the one fight you'd expect to be a double battle in this gym is just not a double battle. Instead, it's just two back-to-back -back single battles. However, it's four Mons each, so this is an 8v6. First up is Tate, and they're going to lead with a Focus Sash Azelf. Now, this Azelf wants to use Stealth Rock, so all I'm going to do is Rapid Spin to clear the Stealth Rocks, increase my speed, and then next turn I can take it out with an X Scissor. Latios comes in and it wants to Earthquake me, so we're going to switch over to our Femboy, who's going to take that shit lickety schmlit. Because the Latios will now want to use Draco Meteor, I could just Mega Evolve my Femboy into a Fairy type, avoid the damage, and hit it with a Moon Blast. It goes for a Zen Headbutt on us, but I simply do not believe in getting flinched, so we just hit it with another Moon Blast, and it's done. Oh no, guys, it's definitely Hoopa. I don't know what I should do. Oh god, I'm so scared. Switching to the monkey with a Lumberry in case I get poisoned from the Sludge Bomb makes this pretty easy. All I gotta do is hit it with a close combat, and he's out of there. The real Hoopa comes in, and I gotta switch out a monkey, so I swap over to the Femboy to try and pray that I get a Shadow Ball to avoid damage, but... It's just an Aura Sphere anyways, and I switched back over to my Hydreigon and not really punished, but just kind of tried to avoid taking a little more damage, and it didn't really pay off. Either way, it doesn't really matter because we kill the Hoopa and we go on to the next fight. All right, so now we got part two to this fight, and I got to leave with my Excadrill again. This time, they have a Tapu Lele, which sets up the Psychic Field, which means I cannot use priority moves. It opts to use the Nature's Madness on me, and I just murder it with an Iron Head. Latias comes in, and it wants to Dragon Pulse my Excadrill, so I could just swap over to Azumarill, who is immune to the Dragon Pulse, and because all this Latias can really do is hit me with an Aura Sphere, it goes down to a few play roughs. Metagross comes out and it wants to Mega Evolve and hit my Azumarill with a Zen Headbutt. So all I gotta do is swap over to my Greninja, be immune to the Psychic move, and then finish him off with two Dark Pulses. Another Hoopa comes out and it wants to hit me with an Aura Sphere. So I swap over to my Azumarill, tank the Aura Sphere, and then I can swap into my Hydreigon, who's immune to the Psychic move that he wants to hit me with. I hit him with a U-Turn and bring him down to 1 HP. This battle is as good as over, right? I'm, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed in myself. Definitely could have been a lot worse, but holy shit, man. <laughs> the death box. Oh my god. It is a lot heavier than it was when we started this split. It I it did uh-huh. Seriously, like, why does this thing exist, man? Like, this Pokemon just doesn't even feel fun to use. But I'm still gonna use him to help take back the Space Center from Teague Magma because, you know, he is kind of OP after all. Editor, can you put two balls on this rocket ship? Oh wait, I'm the editor. So the first couple fights that you do inside the Space Center are just single battles, nothing special, nothing crazy going on here. However, we are now at our first boss fight. Admin Courtney leads with the... Oh, it's just a baby. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rawr, it's a big, scary dinosaur man. Given that I sent in Swampert and he misses his first head smash, I can now pretty much just guaranteed 1v1 this thing, so. Kind of rude that the Zerkatree just, like, ignored my plea for no grass. Mr. Silly, beat this guy's ass. Fun fact, they actually modeled Buzzwool after me. Just gotta send in the monkey, tank the ice punch, and hit him with the one-two fake out overheat. 
I'm also always one step ahead of your shenanigans. We have a shed shell, so we can't get trapped by the Dug Trio. We swap to Aerodactyl because he's immune to the earthquake and outspeeds the Dug Trio to just one shot it with an Ice Fang. Aero can take out the Charizard because even though a Dragon Claw crit from Mega Evolved Charizard would kill me, uh, it doesn't see that before Mega Evolved, so it goes for a Flare Blitz, which will never kill me. So, well, um, GG, I guess. Nothing says evil organization like attacking a child in a three-on-one, but you know, you're polite enough to give them an option to leave if they want. Like I said, this is a three-on-one. I can't heal or change my team order in between battles, and it's not bad. However, the only difficult part of it is planning for the Machamp on the second trainer, who has no guard and dynamic punch, so safe to say that you're gonna get confused, but I just risk Metacham's life because I'm sadistic. I don't know. The rest of it is easy. Are we being useful to our leader at all? No. I don't want to help you. Whatever, fine, just don't touch me. Space tag, space tag, space tag, space tag, space tag, space tag, space tag. Tyranitar Mega Evolves to set up sand. I just have Quillfish here to outspeed and one shot the Landorus with a Life Orb Ice Punch. My Dialga is just gonna wanna set up a Trick Room turn one because it's slow as shit, but he's just gonna get taunted by the Tyranitar. However, the point of this fight is to escort Steven's team rather than go for the kills myself. In this case, Floatzel, you're just gonna do as much damage as possible and let Dialga clean up the mess. Thank you for your service. And then this is perfect because my Dialga is just gonna go for an Aura Sphere, and oh, look at that, he just takes out the Heatran for me. <laughs> okay. Both Tyranitar and Garchomp are gonna target my slot, so I swap to Caracosta to either tank this or die trying. But luckily for me, he actually just lives, so it makes this fight a lot easier. And now my Dialga is once again left unchecked, and this time it just decides to one-shot the Garchomp. So now that one side is completely out, we now have a two-on-one, so this might as well be GG. Because I have Karakasa and Weezing, they both have Protect, and all I have to do is just stall out turns and let Steven do his thing and take out the last three. Like, come on, we outspeed the Moltres, this is just a one-shot with Rock Slide. And then a Ferrothorn in the back that wants to power rip my mom that's gonna protect while my Dialga kills it with a Flamethrower? Good luck! <laughs> So gracious of Steven to thank me by giving me the HM for dive, so now I can make my way to Sutopolis. From now on, this game is pretty much just going to be on water, and there are a lot of optional trainers that you can run into. Though, as long as you're careful navigating around the open seas, you can just stick near the edge and you're not gonna really run into anybody that you shouldn't. But we made it to Sutopolis, and now there's only one thing to do. We gotta get the expert belt. I decided to get my encounter in the grass. Uh, Smash. Hell yeah. Seafloor cavern. Hell yeah. Woo! What makes Seafloor and Cavern difficult is that all of the grunts here have permanent Aurora Veil set up, so you pretty much have to start out every single battle with a way to break that Aurora Veil, otherwise it's just gonna be like near impossible. So as long as you have Brick Break or Psychic Fangs on your lead or some sort of switch, like as long as you have that for your first turn or two to break the Aurora Veil, then you're fine. There is a two trainer gauntlet where you can heal and switch your team around in between the battles, but you are stuck here and you have have to do two of them back to back. Oh yeah, and then there's the fight with Shelly. Shelly leads with a Tapu Fini that immediately sets up Misty Terrain. Now I gotta lead with the Basque Legion because he's the only one that can really tank the moves and Psychic Fangs is gonna break the Aura Veil. I send in Toga tomorrow because he could take a Moon Blast and this Tapu Fini is within range to kill it with a single Zing Zap. So I go for it because Togi should be safe anyways and we hit the range, so all good. Alucha wants to close combat my Togi so I swap to my Gliscor to tank it and because I'm not holding an item, I can now kill him with an itemless acrobatics. Gengar comes in next, and this is just an easy cleanup for the bunny because I can mega evolve and then hit it with a fake out return since I have Scrappy. Darmanitan comes in, and this guy hits like a truck, so no one can really tank this other than the goat himself. So Big Step is going to come in and tank some icicle crashes, and yeah, we can get flinched, but we have plenty of chances to just hit him with a single body press and put him in the dirt. 
Now, originally I was going to sacrifice my Avalug here, but I kind of decided to see if I could find a workaround for it. And it got a little scuffed here because he wants to earth power my goat. I swapped a Gliscor to be immune to it and then bait the ice beam so I could swap into my Volcarona, hit him with the mystical fire to lower a special attack. And as you can see, I'm just kind of switching back and forth between guys, baiting his moves to get a little chip damage here and there. Now, I do finally take him down with the bunny rabbit. All it took was just kind of spamming return until he eventually died, but in comes the slow bro. I can't switch into anybody here safely without them dying. So now my efforts of saving Avalog have gone to waste and I got to throw my goat to the sharks. Yeah, and then Volcarona just one shots it, so. So the next fight is a little tricky, and at the same time, I've also just been thinking of how I want to get my encounters from here. And I decided I was going to go get two underwater encounters on Route 124 and 126. So I got an Amistar, a Delmize. This made it easier to get my Seafloor Cavern encounter because I just wanted to get a Dragonite, and you know, that's exactly what I got. Man, not this shit again. Hey man, yeah, it was me. Look, the last time I did this with the other guy, uh, he tried to awaken the red thing with a blue orb. So can you, oh, okay, cool. This one's actually blue. All right, so we're, we're good then. We're chilling, right? God damn it. There's no Aurora Veil in this fight. However, there is permanent rain. Ludicolo on the lead is gonna fake out and try and energy ball this Kyogre. I'm holding a Cherry Berry so I don't get paralyzed by the Thunders. However, that does not mean this opening is riskless because I could die to a crit or a double paralysis. Avoiding the first paralysis was good. Now we can knock off the Custat Berry and then we just gotta tank one more Thunder. We get paralyzed, but we didn't get crit. So this is fine because we heal the paralysis with the Cherry Berry and then we can finish him off with one more energy ball. Overquill comes in next, and this thing has Swift Swim. And lucky for me, the Omastar that I picked up earlier actually comes in clutch here. Uh, he misses the Gunk Shot initially, which is just even better for me. But the next turn, he flinches me with a Waterfall. However, uh, I just kind of kill him with a Surf. Um, yeah, this guy really is just God, huh? Superior comes out, and this thing is Contrary. Uh, I just know that it's gonna Leaf Storm, so I swap over to my Volcarona, who can take that shit like a boss. And I know that it's gonna wanna glare me to get a Paralysis off, so I have a Berry to heal that. And then I could just take him out with a single Pollen Puff. So this Zapdos is just a demon, because the coverage is insane with Rain and Weather Ball set up. Uh, so I send Chonky to his death. Now, Pretty much all Chonky has to do here is I'm just going to keep pressing the attack button, even if I'm getting confused, and however much damage I'm able to get off before I inevitably die will determine how many mons I have to sack here. After a long drawn out back and forth between me and the Zapdos with him roosting and me just throwing attacks at him, Chonky just kills himself. However, this is the perfect damage range because my Swift Swim Ludicolo can come in, fake him out, and hit him with the Surf. Aegislash comes in, but all it can do is either Flash Cannon or Shadow Ball my on the verge of death Ludicolo, so I can just swap over to Urshifu, who can obliterate this dude. Swampert comes in last, and of course it Mega Evolves. Now, I actually just have to sacrifice my Omastar here because I need a safe swap into Galissapod. Now, I hit the Swampert with a first impression, and it goes for a Power Up Punch to try and raise its attack on me, which isn't going to help it because it doesn't put me into Emergency Exit Range the next turn with a Liquidation, to where I can then hit him with a Liquidation, and he's low enough to kill him with a Sucker Punch. It appears I lost. At least I have me trusty whale. God damn it, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this cutscene alone is better than like 99% of AAA games nowadays. As you probably know, the next thing we have to do is go to Sky Pillar. But first, we must deal with erratic weather, or as people call it, the erotic weather. Yeah. 
Hon honestly, I didn't even come up with that one. It's just a bunch of fights that either have sun or rain in them, and the AI's teams are adjusted accordingly. So a little difficult. I beat the first trainer on this route, but I didn't even try to see if I can go in Origin Cave. And once I head over there to check, it seems that I can. So I guess I had to do that anyways. There's a Megastone for Mawile in here, but we don't even need that. So the encounter we get is an Ursa Luna, which is pretty cool. But at this point in the game, you can start to tell that I am going to get a lot lazier with my nicknames. I just, it's getting tiring. I can't really sugarcoat it. Each one of these fights took a long time to figure out because they're all difficult. But if I sat here and I talked about every single fight in detail and went through each individual one and each decision that I made and all that shit, um, this video would take forever. And I don't think this is an interesting enough route to warrant that level of effort put into it. So uh, I, I drew you guys a picture. I hope this makes up for it. So we finally make it to Sky Pillar and our goat Wallace is here to greet us. Now on our way up, we get our encounter here just because I wanna save a little time. And hey, you know what, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. We say hello to the silly green worm and I make a quick pit stop to Pacifilog so I can fly here later. POV, you are giving Rayquaza back shots. Hey, can you guys shut the fuck up? Oh, everything's okay now? All right, cool. Our reward is the HM for Waterfall, but we can't use that until we get the eighth gym badge. We also receive the Devon Radar, which is gonna allow us to get our first legendary. I never explored this part of the map, but I didn't realize that there was a grass patch put over here. So I decide to get an encounter here and I get a Togepi. This will actually be pretty helpful, I think. I don't know. I get an encounter for Pacifilog and ugh, man, you've probably noticed by now I haven't gotten encounters on some of these routes because if you save these encounters, you can use your radar are and encounter stuff like this, a Landorus. That's pretty cool, right? Now, no matter what you do, these rumors will run away. All you can do is throw a single ball at the start of the battle. In this case, we use our master ball that we got earlier and we now have a Landorus. He reminds me of Mr. Clean. Never got an encounter for Moss Deep, so I go fishing and, you know, we get a cloister. None of the encounters here are really good options, but hey, at least I finally found the clitoris. All right, so I had another silly goose moment. I forgot to record the first double battle. Oops. I guess I guess the theme of this gym is there's a lot of trainers that like to abuse setup moves like this trainer that I'm fighting that tries to set up stealth rocks multiple times but and we just kind of have to suck it up and deal with it. In terms of notable trainers in this gym, there's one about halfway through who leads with a Politoed that sets up rain with Drizzle, and there's a bunch of Swift Swim Mons. Now, notably, there is a Feraligator in the back that has Dragon Dance, and it can really fuck up your day. Lucky for me, though, our boy's gonna make a debut. We got the man himself, Perk 30. <laughs> Hit him with the Perk Beam. <laughs> All right, you served your usefulness for this run. Goodbye. There's also back-to-back -back battle with two trainers. Uh, this first trainer has a Kabutops with a Focus Sash and Weak Armor, and it wants to set up Stealth Rocks. So uh, it's kind of difficult because your lead also has to be good for the next trainer as well. And then also in this first fight, there's a Gothitel, so you're even more restricted on what you can even lead this battle with because if you're not careful, you're just gonna get trapped by the Gothitelle. After winning that battle, you immediately drop into the next one. This is where having Lucario as the lead is really helpful because a Brick Break prevents this Cryogonal from setting up Aurora Veil and it also just insta-kills it. Now, the theme for this back-to-back -back is pretty much just death by a thousand paper cuts because these trainers have mods that really just are chipping away at your health and, you know, there's a sprinkling of one or two in there that can just, like, outspeed and do a lot of damage, but as long as you're careful with the first battle and you have enough resources going into the second one, it's okay. After just one more double battle, we are now confronted with the eighth gym leader. About fucking time. Ugh. Okay, uh, this gym fight is a double battle once again, so he leads with the Glalie and a Sneasler. The Glalie wants to Mega Evolve, and the Sneasler has a Focus Sash and can Fake Out. So by leading Ludicolo, the, Sne the Sneasler now sees a fast kill on Ludi, so it won't fake out. 
and the Glalie also sees a fast kill on the Ludicolo because it has freeze dry. So switching a token to Maru will tank both of those hits, and I can Mega Evolve my Medicham and just insta-kill the Glalie. Keldeo's gonna come in as it sees a fast kill on Token Amaro, and this is really good because both of the Mons on the other side are going to try and use a fighting move into my Togi. So I can spike your shield, it'll stop any hits coming in, but it's also gonna break the Focus Sash from the Sneasler. While this is happening, my Metacham can just Zen Headbutt the Keldeo and put it to sleep. So the Salamence comes in and I'm double intimidated, and it's a really weird position that I'm in because there's a couple different moves that it could go for on my guys. So kind of evaluating uh, what moves may or may not be thrown at me, like a Fire Blast or a Dual Wing Beat or the Sneasler Close Combating or whatnot, uh, I make two quick swaps. Uh, so Basque Legion can tank the Close Combat that was coming, and if it was also a Fire Blast, he would take that as well. But Salamence goes for the Dual Wing Beat on the Metacham slot, which Aerodactyl can tank that Nickety Split. I decide to play this aggressively, so I Dual Wing Beat the Sneasler to just take it out for good, and I just hope that the Salamence doesn't kill me. Yeah, not even close. It's just plot armor at this point, man. Escalation is just gonna hit him with a Poltergeist and it's just gonna do some pretty good damage. Now his own Basque Legion comes in and this is kind of tricky because it sees a fast kill with Aqua Jet on my Aerodactyl, but it could technically also go for a Spirit Shackle kill on my Basque Legion because his is faster. Um, just kind of weird. I just go for another double switch. The double swap play works out in my favor because the Aqua Jet would have killed my Aerodactyl. Uh, Ludicolo takes that easily and he can also just eat a Fire Blast. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I can now just fake out the Dragon Knight and murder the Basque Legion with my Grizzly Bear. Now the Glacier comes out and I didn't realize that Glacial Lance hits both Pokemon. Uh, I knew that my Urshifu could take it, but my Ludicolo couldn't, so I swap out my Ludicolo while I sucker punch the Salamence to take it out. Basque Legion is in and him and Urshifu can take the Glacial Lance, luckily, uh, and then I just murder him. Well, that settles it, guys. There's only one thing left to do. Daddy needs to go and gamble. Oh, did you guys forget about the casino? Because I fucking didn't. Um, actually? Actually, yeah, no, I'm down to get silly with it. Among us! It feels so good to be able to climb waterfalls. I do get an encounter here, actually. Uh... I don't know, man. Now we just got to get through our last route of hell, which is Victory Road. Why the fuck are you here? Wally leads with a Vickavolt that has a Focus Sash. You already know the deal. Fake out, overheat, goodbye. He sends out his Gardevoir, which wants to Mega Evolve, but don't worry, we, we brought back up. Get him, poop! Oh my fucking god. It, do, just do something. Uh, okay. And that's why we have the bunny, who's just gonna Mega Evolve and clap its shit. Azumarill comes in next, but between chip damage from U-Turn and Togemaru coming in and hitting him with the Iron Barbs and then a fake out. Uh, yeah, and then I forgot about Aqua Jet. Uh, we don't get crit though. Uh, Zing Zap still just kills him. Roserade comes in and it's gonna hit me with a random move, but I could just swap to Monkey, he can take it, and then he can just overheat for the kill. This Genesect has a Focus Sash and I can't fake out and overheat him with my Monkey. Uh, luckily for me though, I thought he would have Zap Cannon, but he doesn't, so Basque Legion can just come in and 1v1 this thing. Last is the Obstagoon, and this thing has Guts and a Flame Orb, so it's a little scary, right? But he has Facade, Knock Off, and Cross Chop, so just by kind of bouncing back and forth between my Lopunny and my Basque Legion, I can take him out risk-free. Victory Road has no lack of difficult trainers. However, there, there's a couple that aren't too bad. 
Um, what, once you get a little bit in, you actually get access to a second Master Ball, and you already know what we're about to go do now. We're gonna go find another Legendary. I'm not sure why this thing exists, but I can't deny that it is pretty damn good. I also didn't realize this entire time I could have gotten the scanner, which is basically access to a free choice item. Uh, yeah, that would have been helpful a while ago. Was my least favorite part of Victory Road the difficult trainers and having to meticulously plan out each of my fights? No, it, I, I would I would say that that was kind of fun, you know, having to deal with some puzzles, tackle some challenges. It's so much fun, right? Um, the worst part about this is this stupid fucking puzzle using the Dustclops AI. Like, what is this shit? It's actually such a simple solution using totally intended game mechanics. You open your bag, close it, walk one step. Open your bag, close it, walk one step. Open your bag, close it, walk one step. Open your bag. I don't even want to call it a puzzle because it's not a puzzle. You're just, it's a waste of time. Uh, at least that's the last bullshit we have to deal with. Oh yeah, man, why not add more dust clops in here? That's what this maze was missing. I spent so much time in here not knowing what the hell to do. Uh, my first thought was I had to break all of the rock smash blocks and then maybe the path would be a little more clear. Um, that's actually not the case. Uh, I found the solution later on and it was so simple it pissed me off. Oh yeah, I also got a Dragapult for my encounter. Um, no, I will not be using him. And this guy is still holding a grudge against me for killing his family. Um, whatever. What makes this battle so difficult is that he leads with an Indeedee that sets up the psychic terrain, so we can't use priority moves. However, I did read that you can use Defog to get rid of terrains, apparently. Okay, so that was a fucking lie. It literally says, if there is a terrain active and this move is successful, the terrain will be cleared. Maybe I have to just do it later in the battle? Maybe I have to like make sure the Indeedee's out of the way. Okay, that, that would make sense. Okay, Dragapult could just kill you. Uh, Pheromosa comes in. Uh, monkey, kill the Pheromosa. Um, okay, the Cloister. Okay, I can swap in my Zatsu into that. Uh, I'll just sack it, I don't care. Let's get the Defog off. I'm going to fu- That last fight was personal. The level cap for the Elite Four is level 99, but you can use rare candies to get six of your mons up to level 100. Luckily for me, I've barely been using mine, so having six ready for this was pretty straightforward. As far as who I'm bringing for the Elite Four, this took a lot longer than I thought it would, mainly because uh, how this one works is you have to fight two Elite Four members as single battles and the other two as double battles. Now, it, it doesn't matter which ones you pick to fight in single or double, but each of the members has a different team depending on which one you choose to do. So there's a couple different paths you can take when it comes to team building, uh, and it took a little bit of time for me to kind of figure out which ones I felt comfortable doing in a double battle. Um, I tried to think about how I could do this without having Urshifu because I fucking despise that Pokemon, but um, he's just like so overpowered and uh, it just made it easy. And honestly, I don't fucking care anymore. I don't need to introduce the team. I feel, bro, bro, bro you gotta fire your fucking barber, dude. I don't need an introduction for my team. I'm just gonna do uh, Sydney singles battle and they'll introduce themselves.
First up to bat is the Sexy Bunny. Uh, Greninja just wants to set up hazards, so we just Mega Evolve and Fake Out, hit it with a Double Edge, and call it a day. The Crossbow comes out and it wants to hit me with a Photon Geyser, so we're going to switch over to the Unfair Bear. There's a chance that it could go for a Stealth Rocks, but that really wouldn't matter if it did. However, it does not, so get the fuck out of here. It appears that Sydney also bought the DLC for Sword and Shield, so now it's time for our third member. Fuck him up, penis. Yeah, intimidate him. Look at that. How, that is so intimidating. Editor, put two balls on. We tank the close combat and it lowers his defense, which means we can now just kill him with a single Draco Meteor. Nido King comes out, so it's time to get sussy. We always live a sludge wave and a life orb psychic kills us in one shot. This Yveltal's a bitch to deal with, but we still have our fairy gem, which you know what that means. Fuck him up, cooch. We tank the Dark Pulse on the switch in and we outspeed and kill it with a fairy gem boosted moon blast. This Gyarados is cringe. He will never be mega evolved. When will I learn? Yeah, once again, you're easy as fuck to kill. Goodbye. Oh, the critical hit was just gratuitous. You. If I didn't decide to bring my Urshifu along, I probably would have just avoided this double battle. However, um, you know what? Let me let, let's bring back the counter. Yeah, you remember that that rock slide counter? Let's bring it back for Urshifu this time. So Phoebe leads with a Chandelure and a Decidueye. The Decidueye has a Focus Sash and it wants to set up Tailwind, and the Chandelure has a chance to protect and a chance to try and kill you. However, Urshifu does not care about your protect. Do you know who you're protecting in front of? Get the fuck out of here. I know Decidueye wants to set up Tailwind, so I'm going to do that as well. Gengar comes in, and Decidueye doesn't see a kill, but he can kill Urshifu with a crit close combat. However, I simply do not believe in critical hits. The Gengar Mega evolves, but he is fucking stupid and doesn't realize that I have a choice scarf. Goodbye. I need to break the sash, so I go for an air slash to try and get a flinch as well, but he still gets his close combat off. Yeah, see, crits aren't real. Lunala, I hate to break it to you. Um, get fisted. Oh no, you live on one HP? If only I outsped both of your guys and had Dazzling Gleam. Get out of my lobby. Now this Blastoise is really stupid because it has Fake Out and Follow Me, and it's just meant to be annoying. Uh, the guarantee, like, this is still a threat here, so I just gotta double switch out, but you know what? I think, I think you deserve to be bullied just a little bit. Larry just tanks that shit like a boss, but he's not here for very long. We're just gonna swap him out. Uh, Lopunny's just here in a Mega Evolve, and I'm gonna fake out the Garantina because I know this Blastoise is just gonna follow me, thinking he's slick, but I'm just gonna get a free switch. Garantina knows that I'm faster and have a killing roll, so he's just gonna Shadow Sneak this turn, and the Blastoise is just stupid as fuck. He's just gonna Muddy Water. Uh, we're just gonna murder his friend. Wow, you're so useful, man. Hey, hey, is it funny when I do it? Do you enjoy it? Do you, do you like when I do this to you? Penis, send this man to the Shadow Realm. Womp womp. This fight isn't perfect, but I, I just... I had the opportunity to just be silly, you know? Uh, if there's an opportunity to get silly with it, I'm getting silly with it, you know what I'm saying? So Glacia leads with a Magearna and a Kerbominable, and I'm sure you know where this is going. I transform into the Magearna, and I hit myself with a Rock Tomb to lower my own speed as this strat gets a little quirky with it. Kerbominable is a little unpredictable with what he'll do, but he's never really an actual risk to this plan. Oh yeah, you should know Magearna's moveset. Uh, so it sets up Trick Room, right? Trick Room's pretty cool. Um, you did a really good job setting up Trick Room that turn. Can you do it again for me? That, that'd be pretty cool if you could do it again. Woohoo! Yippee! You're so talented. Trick Room has a negative priority, so 
pretty much every turn, this Magirna on the other side is going to be changing the order in which we move. This next turn, it's just normal dimension, so I actually am able to go first. Dazzling Gleam will just kill the Kerbominable, and it'll also do a little chip damage to the Magirna. On top of that, now we start getting the Soul Heart procs. I don't care if the other Magirna gets them, bold of you to assume they're even going to attack me. This next turn, the dimensions are now reversed. Calyrex comes in, which is perfect because I am just slower, but also technically faster? I don't know. Lopunny's gonna Mega Evolve, and we're gonna fake out the Calyrex. Steel Gem boosted Flash Cannon is gonna do quite a chunk to their Magirna. It's not gonna kill. Uh, I wanted to use Magirna for the rest of the battle, but uh, it's only gonna leave him on like one HP, so we're gonna have to switch her. Oh. Yeah, okay, you know what? No, that just makes things easier. Well, we're stuck slow, so Flash Cannon is just going to obliterate this Calyrex. And Porygon is not very threatening. So this Abominoso is weird because it does not see a killing roll on me with Earth Power, and I just thought that it should go for the Aurora Veil. I, I, I thought that's what the eye wanted to do. Um, no, he Mega Evolved, so he's now slower than me, um, and he hits me with an Earth Power. We live, but it doesn't really matter because the Porygon is going to kill us anyways. Yeah, it's just going to hit us with a tri-attack. Okay, never mind. You're a fucking brick. Funny, because we are one turn away from dying from a uh, Hail Chip, but we can just still outspeed and kill this Kyurem, so doesn't matter. I don't know what the fuck happened that fight. That was not how it was supposed to go, but I, I'm not going to complain. Pathetic. I got one choice. Am I gonna fight or run? I'm gonna kick your ass, old man. Drake just leads with a Dragapult, but wow, how convenient. I can just one-shot you with a Sucker Punch. That was so difficult. This Mon is so good and balanced. This brings out the Reshiram, and it really wants to hit me with a blue flare. I just bring in my Salamence, and he can easily take the blue... Ooh, oh. Um, alright, I didn't think that would happen. Um, you still died to a Draco Meteor, but... Um, th this is, this is different. Yeah, uh, see, this is not what I, I wanted to see immediately. Uh, because I didn't get hit by the blue flare, uh, I'm no longer in kill range of the Salamence coming in. Uh, so this is really off track. I have a bug gem on Galizapod, so I'm just going to send him in, tank the ice beam, and he's going to do as much damage as possible. Though, because of the position I'm in, there's not much I can do about letting the Suicune set up a substitute. Switch to the bunny, because that's the only mon I have that can safely and effectively break the substitute and is also going to outspeed the Suicune. Oh my fucking god. I Mega Evolve and you turn out, but even that's not gonna break the substitute. I just bring in Mew because if I don't get incredibly unlucky and get crit like three times, then I should just like win the spam war uh, by throwing a bunch of psychics at him. So we have a little back and forth of me throwing psychic, him throwing scalds, but because we avoided the crits in the process, uh, we're able to take him out. But this is not the position that I wanted to be in. Crawdaunt comes in, it has a Focus Sash, so I swap over to Galissapod, tank a Lash out. This is gonna proc Emergency Exit so I can swap out. I switch into the Bunny, I fake out and U-turn to get Chip, and then I can finish it off with Galissapod. Zygarde comes in, and this thing's scary. Uh, once again, I have to play a little risky here. Um, it does not see a kill on me with any of its moves. However, if it does get a crit, I'm just straight up dead. Uh, I decide to risk it because I don't really need Larry for the last fight. Um, but luckily, he does not kill me with the Dragon Claw. So I'm able to get off a Liquidation. Uh, and it's random move, but I know my Enamorous can take either one of them, so I swap over to her. He hits me with a thousand arrows, which is kind of weird. Um, I didn't even realize that this smacks me to the ground, okay? But we do outspeed and kill him with a Moonblast. Salamence comes in last, and of course this is not the way that I wanted it to go. Um, right now it's looking really bad, like we might have to sack one, maybe two Mons. Uh, I decide to send in my Salamence to hit him with an Intimidate. So Salamence Mega Evolves, and it's going to hit me with an Aerial Late Return, which is going to do a lot of damage. Wait! I completely forgot that because the Zygarde smacked my Namors to the ground, there was still a chance that the Salamence would Earthquake me. 
Um, oh, holy shit. Okay, we're we're chilling. We're we're good. We're good. Did I deserve to get out of that uh, without any deaths? Uh, probably not. Honestly, that was just kind of the climax of the Elite Four because making it to the champion with six mons left just means that this is going to be pretty easy. Uh, allow me to demonstrate. This fight's actually not that bad. Wallace leads with a Kyogre, except this time, uh, it's going primordial. And yeah, now we're doing this fight in heavy rain. Kyogre wants to hit me with an origin pulse, but Mega Bunny can just hit him with the fake out U-turn combo. And I can switch into Salamance, who will easily take the origin pulse and then can kill with the Dragon Claw. This bear's cute is annoying because it only knows liquidation and flip turn. It is impossible to outspeed it. Uh, and it's gonna do a fuck ton of damage. I swap into Larry, who's gonna take whatever the Barrascuta can throw at me. Uh, in this case, it's a flip turn, and he swaps over to Kalkia. Now, all I'm gonna do is hit him with the first impression, and Larry, you have been so beautiful, I salute you, my good sir. Sacking Larry lets us swap in our Enamorous, who just outspeeds and kills with a Moonblast. The Barrascuta comes back in. Now, I'm going to sack Salamence this time. Uh, I'm going to swap over to him and hit the Barrascuta with an Intimidate, which will make it just a little bit easier to take this guy out. You weren't here for very long, but man, you put in a shift. Lopunny comes in, and I hit him with a Fake Out. Now, I'm going to assume I'm not going to get crit here. Uh, I'm going for the Jump Kick because I don't want to go for a Double Edge and take that Recoil as it will kill me and I want to sack Lopunny after the next Mon comes in. We get hit with the Liquidation and it does not crit us which is perfect because we hit the Jump Kick and we finish off the Barrascuta. Man if he comes in and we about to do this dude so dirty, uh, Bunny you have been perfect from start to finish, all you gotta do is just hit a Double Edge and I'll see you on the other side. This Manaphy and my Mew are speed tied. Now, oh. All right, well, you just lost the game. Um, I will take that from you. Thank you very much. Oh, and I just like win the speed tie. <laughs> Look, man, just give it up. Your last two mons literally can't do shit. Like, realistically, what even is the play here? I do half of your HP almost with a single ice beam. Like, that's not right. A, a curse isn't gonna save you, man. Hey, man, at least you're taking it like a champ. I mean, I'd be a little salty too. Oh, oh. So you're taking, oh, okay, I get it, I see. Was it worth it? Did the, did the rest help you? Did it help? Ooh, doesn't look like it. Mew is so fucking silly, bro. <laughs> oh God, it'd be a shame if this Mega Swampert outsped and killed me. Oh no. Ow, oof, oof, ow, ooh, ow, ouch, my bones. I will see you in hell. Look, I don't need you to tell me about how my Pokemon danced and how they were like crazy with it, because trust me, I know, I, I'm the trainer. What the fuck are you doing here? Like some advice? How about I give you some advice? Quit. Give up. This run took so long to finish, but hey, here we are, baby. We fucking made it. Um, wow. Okay. I didn't expect 
Okay, um, when I started this, I wasn't expecting to make like an over two hour long shit post of me just kind of like playing this game for shits and giggles, right? Um, but I had fun. Um, I mean, if there is anybody that actually watched the whole thing and got to this point, I mean, thank you. Um, I'm still pretty new to uh, content creation and I've just been having fun with it. I'm going to do more stuff in the future, of course. Um, but for now, I just wanted to say thank you, and I appreciate the support. Okay, wait, actually, one more thing.